the splendid Millennium Stadium, where the dreams of a nation hover above a green oblong. But now the hope is genuine, where 12 short months ago there was despair. The structure's complete, confidence has replaced pessimism. During the year prior to the Rugby World Cup coming to Cardiff, the Welsh team has undergone a complete transformation. We are bloody magnificent with the ball. We are never dull. We take them on from our own goal line. We have to. We give them shit. We're good enough. Bloody told. Make it happen. Play that game. Be bold. We run our guts off. We run them off the ground. We've got to show the initiative. We're trying to select the test team here. We're trying to select the best 30 in Wales. We're trying to be a bloody world force in the game. Graham's first game on home soil. Argentina at Stradi Park in November 98. Wales were to meet the Pumas on three further occasions within the year. This was an all-important match. Having won respect, but having lost the game against South Africa at Wembley, they needed to win this one. Only out to Jenkins, Mark Taylor, he's through the gap. He's over in the corner, it's a try for Mark Taylor. After two months at the helm, no one expected miracles from Graham, but there was a sense that something different was happening. Good work by Jenkins, wheels attacking from depth. Scott Gibbs to Mark Taylor. Taylor over the 10 metre line, looking for support, gets it. Front fist wire, Charles, it's a second try for Wales, missed many minutes. The problem, though, was at the scrum. Without a solid platform at set piece, there isn't a team in the world that will succeed, no matter how creative they are. This match was won, but the problems in the pack remained. High hopes in the final five nations dissolved in the Celtic melting pot. The Irish, as the Scots had done two weeks earlier, taught the new coach some harsh lessons. There was a passion and intensity in their play, which he hadn't accounted for. What a tragedy for Wales, it's a try for Kevin Max. In defeat, this match was probably the turning point. There were signs that far better was to come. Good hands from the Welsh. Shen Howarth, can he get to the line? Yes, he can. We'll be pulling together in unity, harmonise ourselves both mentally and physically, and we're going to do some incredibly huge hits. <laughs> There was no point in going to Paris with a shaky scrum. No, it's for real. Come on, come on, and get it right. Does it feel right? Does it feel right? And this one's for real. This one's for real. Come on. This one's for real. Big one. The spanking new star de France had already secured one World Cup, and no Welsh team had upset the tricolours on their own soil since the 70s. It was adventure and audacity that turned the tide. Chavez eyes the options, takes a more direct route, his arm outstretched, he gets the try! Wales on the attack once again, it looks like a try for winger Darryl James, 
He's over in the corner. Robert Howley, he's got Craig Quinnell on the wide outside. What was the lock forward doing there? Who cares? It's another try. Castagnade's last-minute kick would have given the French an unjust victory. But justice on this occasion was seen to be done. Paris to Italy, and the scoreboard clicked up 60 confident points. Where there were weaknesses and doubts in the past, there was now certainty and order. It's another try, and that is that! It was, however, the Towers of Wembley which would test the real extent of their development. The last match in the Five Nations Championship. Wales' last visit to their temporary home in exile. The English seeking a triple crown and a grand slam to complete the millennium in style. Tom was setting the mood. Rob was leading from the front. And Graham was about to lift the curtain on the biggest drama that the championship had seen. From early on, the English galloped towards their would-be crown. Jinx's unerring accuracy was the only source of comfort to the Red Hordes. The chariots, though, rolled on relentlessly, and the Welsh were close to being overrun. Occasional flourish kept the dragon's spirit alive. But despite the magic boot, the old enemy would be in gifted victory on a plate. Less than half the battle remained when a chink in the armour was found. Despite some valiant attempts, a six-point advantage seemed too much to overcome with barely a minute remaining. One last effort. This then the last opportunity for Wales. Quinnell fumbles. Scott gives on a darting run. He's through the gap.
A South American sojourn was next, but without one of the heroes. A chance, maybe, for others to impress. <laughs> One or two fresh faces and an old stager as the Kiwi and his guys look to gather a squad able to challenge the world. Testing the metal of players on the fringe was one of the tour aims, measuring the depth of talent on foreign soil. Hey lads. Hey. Just all wave. Everybody wave for this. Just wave for this. That's great. I think the people in this room are on the brink of something very, very special. And this is where it all starts. When we first came together, there was a challenge. There's no doubt about that. I don't think it's a challenge anymore. I think it's an opportunity. I think it's a great opportunity. And an opportunity like this comes in some people's lives, you know, very, very rarely. Some people never, ever get to it. We're living out people's fantasies, there's no doubt about that. And just the thought of competing for the nation, competing with this team, and having a chance to be accepted as the best team in the world before the end of the year, it's, it's absolutely incredible. It's obviously a World Cup rehearsal. Everybody is going, is involved with the World Cup. Right? Liaison people, baggage people, managers, coaches, and hopefully you. I'll be there. Um, I've got a contract. Um, but I, the, the terrible thing about it is we can only pick 30. And there's 37 here. And um, there's, there's, there's a few not going who will come into consideration, obviously. But I believe that we can be the best in the world. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> I had a school photo as a boy, no idea, is it? Ah, twas. Scott Cornell could be an awesome player. Ugh. Scott Sorry. Cornell at the moment is an average test player. Lost the ball. Because he loses six balls a test match yeah. in the tackle. But he's capable of their attention. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. it's, it's, a mind, it's a mind thing. Yeah. Cup semi -final. He doesn't think. He, he still thinks he's a big 18-year-old boy playing against his mates mm. in Western Wales somewhere. Yeah. And he thinks he can just bust through. Yeah. But he can't. Here, What's that? Can't see it here. What? My birthday. Oh! <laughs> All right. Oh. Where shall we put the <laughs> low count? Hey? 36 <laughs> candles. <laughs> 36, 36. I've had a hard life. <laughs> and Stanley was 21. <laughs> Important things to know about Argentina, Tango, Evita and Maradona, but perhaps not in that order. There's scarcely been as many Welsh landing in Argentina in one batch since the colonising of Patagonia. They came in search of a long-term peaceful existence. This lot came to conquer, quickly, and return with the spoils. First residence, a colonial-type sports complex, far from the metropolitan temptations of Buenos Aires. 
no excuses for lack of concentration. There's always one bloke late for the party. Mark's excuse was that he got married or something. Line-outs opposed, we've got two teams, we can do a lot of opposed line-outs which were very helpful to us. Um, Welcome. I can see you're absolutely aesthetic being with us. <laughs> I hope you had a good night last night. <laughs> but what better company than 47 guys instead of that beautiful lady who you were saying? You cannot have off gears with it. For no one, no off gears with it. It can't be sensational one day and shake the next. It's not going to work. The arrangement's going smoothly, apart, that is, from the scrummaging machine, tied up in customs red tape. But the bureaucrats hadn't accounted for Trev. The scrummaging machine arrived on Friday. I'm speaking to the lady here at the British Embassy. It's at the British Embassy. Am I right in saying it's at the British Embassy? That is the absolute critical one. But could I just emphasise with you that it has great urgency for us? Confucius say, never argue with Trev. Next task, put the machine together. For JR the kit man and his faithful servant Manuel, a mere bagatelle. Men and machine in perfect harmony. One, two, three, four! Chiss it up, chiss it up! The next session was harder and more physical than usual. JR was caught, still admiring his work. Blood, stitches and a thumping headache and an over-vigorous prop getting the blame. But not a drop of sympathy, even from Dr. Rodge. <laughs> He's delirious. <laughs> yes, the missus will love this. It's a tragedy that this woman pushed him the way she did, but he shouldn't have been doing what he was doing, and that's that. What can I say? Not really a rugby injury, JR. The only injuries causing any concern were those to Jinx and Craig, both receiving private coaching from Blackie and special treatment from Marcus and Andy. There'd be no action for them before the first test. Boredom is the main enemy on any tour, and if Lee was top dog at ping pong, the others were using their heads. Ready? Go. 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 <laughs> Don't panic now, Dad. Just keep it Person, onion. Come on. Hunchback! The daily routine after breakfast, coach's lesson. Today, biology. Right, somebody. The fatal begin. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing this? <laughs> Who's coming out late at night putting these little penises on them? <laughs> Whoever's doing it's got a very small one. <laughs> here we go. That's Dunham's room, that is. And here's my bedroom. This is my bedroom. Oh, yeah. No. Max got a 10 for the room. And he's like a, like a minus two. Die. Die Young's bed. Um, sleeps really quiet, really quiet. You think he's dead, honestly. Come up in the middle of the night, come up like that, and he's like, and he can't hear him. He just, he's so quiet. And you see what I thought was it? And then me on the other hand, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like. <sighs> and on to the practice field for the serious stuff. That's that's basically the game. You're right on top, on the edge mentally. Because these buggers will be bloody passionate. Huge passion in this part of the world, as you know. They'll play with huge passion down there today. We have got to be totally disciplined. Chris White's the referee. He's an Englishman. He's refereeing the test next week. And we've got to lick his ass, eh? He's got to think this is the best bloody disciplined side he's ever had, had the whistle with. And it's scrum. Meant to be the best scrummaging nation in the world. We beat the French, we stuffed the English, 
and we're going to go on and be a world force, we've got to stop the Argentinians in the scrum. It's a massive physical challenge. Over the years, Buenos Aires have beaten most international sides on their own patch. Visitors still don't fully appreciate that until it's too late. Bates showed his ability, but just like the weather, it was a gloomy beginning. Are we, are we going to be there? Are we need brave big hearts, guts, determination. That's what it's about. The spark and the guts right down here. So I want some buddies heart as well as the spark. Right, so we've got to get bloody physical. But you're a better rugby team if you want to play. The half-time pick-me-up, though, didn't work. The game slipped from the control. Not a test match, but a big test nonetheless, one which they failed. Of the few good points that emerged, a plus for Geraint P, but on the whole, a disappointing performance. Game lost. Bad start. <laughs> the barbecue didn't taste the same that night, and there'd be far more sparks flying in the coaches' meeting following day. We had so many men that we could have tackled half the bloody crowd that was there. But we didn't talk, we didn't communicate. Colin, you're in there and, and, and Brett was on it. And this guy just went straight through the hole. And it's just a matter of talking it, isn't it? We were as quiet as bloody Meisters. <coughs> Meisters said a good word. <coughs> It'll do. All right? We didn't bloody talk it up. And shit, we're bloody test match international footballers who get paid 100 grand a year. Some of us. Uh, you're, you're an international class when you caught up, you've got to bloody take people off. You've got to skin them, man. That's why you're in the side for You skin people when you get to that position. If you don't skin them, you're actually half busted at that when you pop it off to support player we score on the sticks. Okay? I think we've got to scrub together. We've, you've got to keep it close, so I reckon. Obviously, use your technique, but I, I don't think we should try and play funny buggers and just lose some time here. Yeah, we're in there, we're all together. Fair enough? Is that, am I talking shit, Garen? Okay. Next stop, Tucuman, up north. Gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. For your information, we are flying at our cruising altitude of 31,000 feet, estimating the arrival at Tucuman in 40 minutes. The unsavoury taste of defeat in the capital to the citrus garden of the Republic. A must-win scenario to prevent the whole tour from turning sour. A chance for a dozen or more to impress and Martin gets to lead his country for the first time. You know, as a new team, none of us have really played with each other before as an actual 15. So I think basically we've got to go through all the moves, all the calls. I've asked Dave if they would like to just go through um, what we want with the scrum. We've got to chill up tomorrow with a real attitude as an eight to swim in. Very confident that the boys we got here will have no problems. We all buy into the same attitude, no matter what area in the field we are, eight of us are going to swim in. All of us are going to get our heads down, asses up, and work our nuts off for each other. For those resting after game one, an opportunity to do some sightseeing. The pressure to win was now firmly on the shoulders of the 15 picked to take on Tucuman, leaving the others to become real tourists. And where better than a mountaintop monastery to ask a higher power for a little help in their next match?
no resplendent stadia here, just strange smells and Latin Indian characters offering new experiences to the palate. Maybe though, not just before the game. And especially not in a place renowned for its intimidating atmosphere. But there was no need to worry. This was to be Matt's game. Robinson again looking to stake a claim for a place in the first cap. A good, fast, solid run from the Swansea flyer. Taps back inside. This will be his second. Robinson again in space. Such a deceptive runner. Robinson at the third. Robinson again. He's over in the corner. A victory, four tries for the cool dude, and a place in the test side, as the show arrived back, this time in downtown Buenos Aires. Any tour is going to be successful. You have to win the tests. Forget about the first Saturday. Forget about Tuesday. In fairness to the boys who went out on Tuesday, they showed him way. The attitude of some of those senior players on Saturday, let yourselves down. Alfie, some of you might say, has been harshly dealt with. Some might say, form is temporary, class is everything. Not in Graham Henry's book. It's all about form. Matthew shouldn't be dropped on the poly of the French game, but was. Three, day, three games later, he's back in, and rightly so, he proved on Tuesday night that he can do the business, <clears throat> and we all have to follow him. You know, this is a bloody test match, and we're going to bloody win it, right? So let's get on right on the edge, and it's the only way we're going to win it is to play the game I'm telling you to play. You get dull, like we were against BA on bloody Saturday, we are down the dunny. I'll tell you what, that's the last place I want to be because I hate it down there. Doesn't do much good for my psyche. So we're going to get up there, fellas, and we're going to be bloody screaming. To reach the top, perhaps you have to plummet the depths, but then... Who knows what lies beneath the surface? In a country crazy on soccer, it's a wonder that they have any interest in rugby. Our boys, on the other hand, just love the football stars and often relive their great moments of glory. <laughs> right, we're there. We've got to introduce everyone first. Um, <coughs> Simone, <laughs> Beckham, <laughs> referee. Referee. <laughs> Norm, the name for the other guy. To experience the Argentine passion for football, there's only one way to do it a visit to the Bombonera, home of Boca Juniors. Home to a very special number 10. No, not him. The infamous Diego Maradona. The wayward idol was there that night to see Boca set an all-time record. 40 undefeated matches and another championship in the bag. But the Welsh weren't the only rugby squad lapping up the Atmos. An unexpected encounter with the Pumas. And obviously Graham had enjoyed an occasional vino tinto with Fafa from the Argentine management sometime in the past. And from their days in Richmond, Scott, Craig, Bates and Nick knew Pichot very well. It was time, though, to put old friendships aside. Boys, just get excited. If we can't get excited for tomorrow, 
we may as well pack our bags. A Welsh, a Welsh side hasn't won away on a tour of any great significance in the last 87 World Cup. If you look at all the tours since that, there, no Welsh side has been successful on tour. And we've built a lot here over the last two months. Let's not chuck that all away. Because that's what we're going to be doing if we go out there and play piss poor as we did on Saturday. Wyatt, you need to pick your ideas up. Work in the scrub. The honeymoon period is over for you as well. You're lucky that Andy Moore's not in this room. And that is the respect Graham has given to you. And you pay back that tomorrow. For whatever reason, the first half hour was a nightmare. He shot again, Mendes, Quesada cuts back inside, Neil Jenkins, and this will be the first try for Argentina. It's Pichot again, looking for support, gets it from Bartolucci. Bartolucci against Ben Evans, Bartolucci scores in the corner. <laughs> 23 points to the Pumas, a big zero for the impotent Dragon. Blackie blasted and Jinx kicked a goal. The heart started to beat, but they needed a try before the break. Jenkins to James, and at last it's a try for Wales. An all-important score from Dav, a half-time roasting, and now there'd be some serious pumping of the arteries. Trey Cunell drives on, he's got Sinkinson on his shoulder. Sinkinson is over. It's a darting run again from Mark Taylor. Chris Wyatt, Wyatt answering his critics. Twenty-three nil down in a test match, and then to win in comfort. A remarkable comeback. Saturday and it, it, it was 
you didn't you were in the shit you didn't bitch and you kept going and you got it right and you won the game <coughs> and that's bloody marvelous you know you get quite emotional when I thought about this Rosario, an industrial city on the banks of a huge river. Big fish. And on the river, boats. And in the river, fish, allegedly. Who had the last laugh? Probably the fish. Not one of their species had to leave the water, although some of the Welsh creatures did get wet. Some on the inside. Argentina A, their next opposition, and members of both squads trying to make a last-minute impression on the selectors ahead of the second test. Nobody was seriously hurt when a temporary stand collapsed, but some damage was done to a number of Welsh hopefuls, as their defence looked more creaky than the fallen stand. It's Fernandes Miranda. He'll go over in the corner. Again, it's good work. Wheels on the defensive. Looking for another try then, will they get it? It's out to the scrum half, it's Nico Fernandez Miranda. What a night for the brothers. 28-15. All right? Twice now, score twice. twice. We've got to score twice, we've got to win this bloody game. But we've got to play a hell of a lot better than we're doing at the moment, don't we? I know you're trying, it's just it's the, it's the putting it together. Things did improve, and Rodri got a try for his country. Unfortunately, it wasn't his performance which decided his World Cup destiny, but a car accident at home, which kept him out of consideration. Others were still trying to get themselves on that final test sheet. Geraint P and Alfie in particular made their marks. So although the unit ended up by losing, some of its component parts had won favour. Despite the disappointment, there was still a little celebration to be had. Yes, they remembered. <laughs> Lynn and Blackie the following day were the bearers of good news. Graham's job was to explain the whys and wherefores to the unlucky pair. Of the five tour games, Geraint P would appear in four of them. Matt and Colin would have to prove their worth some other time. Fields versus Argentina, second test. The team is fullback Shane Howard, Gareth Thomas in the wing, Mark Taylor centre with Alan Bain, second row, Craig Quinnell, Chris Wyatt, back row, Gerrit Lewis, Scott Quinnell, and Brett Sinkinson. Mm. For many of the squad, the serious side of the tour had come to an end. So the British Embassy's invitation to a little soiree was to be welcomed. So confident are we that the stadium is going to be ready that we're uh, freely giving away special guests of the old stadium. Thank you very much. With two days remaining, Byron and Andy's thoughts were already winging their way home. The plane will leave on Sunday, whether we win or lose. At the last 
two, three days, everyone has been talking about going home. What happened last Saturday for 25 minutes, we were absolutely abysmal. Psychologically, Argentina on a down. They're out of it. They're going to come out of that change room like batches, ten times more physical than they were last week. Craig, I didn't see enough with you on the ball last week. I want to see more with you this week. What, for whatever reason, it didn't come your way, but let's get into the action. You're a big bloke, and you'll take a lot getting down. So get, let's get the ball in your hands. Same with you, SQ, same as last week. And Geraint, you've been put in as well as a ball carrier. Let's do the business. No one will remember if we draw one all. Let's win something with Wales, boys. Hit! Away! Away! Two, three, four! What you've done, by, be, by doing what you've done last Saturday, is put more pressure on yourselves again. Because they'll be huge this week. No matter what you think, right? No matter what you've done, you've done nothing. Because they will be twice as big and twice as strong as what they were last Saturday. That's the way you've heard they prayed. They are really going to be up for this now next Saturday. The pundits or the people reckon we should have beaten Scotland, and we should have beaten Ireland, and we should have beaten South Africa. Still shits me, I still have 39 years back. And we didn't do it. The pundits said we couldn't beat England, we couldn't beat France. And they thought Argentina were favourites last week. So we've got the ability to beat teams against the odds. I'm going to use the greatest muscle in the body. The greatest muscle in the body, the brain. got to work hard. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Huh? Remember last week after 20 minutes when we looked up at that f***ing scoreboard, what it felt like? Come on. What we felt like? Yeah? Not f***ing this week, is it? They knew that this would be uncompromising. And in those situations, there's no one better to have on your side than Garin. Ahead throughout the half, but not comfortably, and too many niggles to please either side. enough power there. They kept finding the spark. Not even a late comeback would deny them their historic win. 2-0 in a test series on Argentine soil, the first time ever for a British side. And that's the final whistle. Wales create their own piece of history in Buenos Aires. Now the fun could begin 
For the first time in three weeks, the 37 could really relax together. This would be the last act for some of them within the Welsh squad, but they each had a huge right to enjoy the celebrations. Everyone had contributed. Mission accomplished. After five international wins on the bounce, the faith in the team had strengthened, and even the doubting Thomases and Joneses started believing that the stadium would be finished on time. The inaugural match was to be against South Africa, the world champions. It seemed quite a good idea, therefore, that the players visited their new home before the encounter. Just like any other new home, the inhabitants have to be comfortable with the furniture, the colour of the walls. Some are happy to have a chat. They chose a lush green in place of a carpet, and luckily that had already been laid a day earlier. There were enough seats to invite a few people around. Some 27,000 would turn up for the housewarming. David and Glanmore seemed content. The time for hard hats was fast coming to an end. Exit the workers, enter the performers, centre stage. This is the big one, fellas. You know, we thought France was big. Pisco was pissing. We thought England was big. It was easy. We thought Argentina was going to be a big tour. Plus, we smashed them. They were part of the world champions. Shit. Marvellous. Wales had never beaten the box, and that last-minute defeat at Wembley had hurt Graham deeply. Today was the day that Wales could show the rugby world that they were firmly back on the map, and that they were more than comfortable in their modest little home. Had that slight taste of success, boys. Five years of the slight taste, and it's the nicest taste in the world. It's the greatest taste in the world. Let's not give it up. Chavez in midfield, looking for support, gets it from Mark Taylor. Mark Taylor finds space, he's through for a historic try. Be number one! 40 minutes to be number one! Oh, good interior! It's back to the wall stuff again from Wales. Oh, what a telling tackle from Brett Sickinson. Magnificent by Mike Boyle. Scott Quinnell charges on. He's got Garrett Thomas on the outside. It'll be another try for Wales. And for Garrett Thomas. There can't be much time left. And Wales hold out to South Africa launch. Yet another attack. Jenkins side puts it into the touchlines. And it's all over. 
ability to compete with the best is a quality to be proud of. But when you start beating the best, it must be a very special feeling. It's probably like a drug, and the Welsh boys are starting to get hooked on it. Six games, six wins, and now the Welsh challenge could be taken seriously. Time to appreciate the plaudits, time to smile, but the jigsaw was incomplete. For three months, Graham's Argonauts had fleeced the land down under, and Jason was the golden catch. Chase, Graham Henry, superb, mate. I'm proud of you, you showed a lot of guts. Well done. Looking forward to seeing you here. Oh, no, I, I just got so much, so much respect for what you've done. For 22 year old, the guts you've shown over there has been quite incredible. Now you just have to play well, right? As you realise. But well done. Looking forward to seeing you. I've been up all night practicing, so I said. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Step by step. Blackie, Lynn and Alan pushed the squad up the rungs of the fitness ladder. Jason would be joining the fittest 29 ever to represent Wales. Canada were the guests for the second game in the stadium and Gibbsy was back. His impact once again was huge as the record stretched to seven. What a death pass from the Cardiff centre. Scott gives again back to his mercurial best. Neil Jenkins, it's a try this time for the outside half. France, Italy, England, Argentina twice, South Africa, Canada and France again would complete an amazing eight-match run-up to the big competition. Everyone is talking about winning the World Cup. Forget that, boys. Totally get that out of your mind now. Because come three o'clock, you'll experience nothing like it. Without guys being in the top in their positions in the world, Craig, let's not talk about it anymore. Let's do the business, eh? Let's get you up there in the top echelon. And the only thing that's going to do that man is your work hard. Because all the abilities there, you need to work. Peter, you need to get up there too. You know, don't rely on what's happened in the past. It's, it's, it's today, you know. Today is the business. Darren, you've been superb. Don't let it slip. Don't let these fellas slip. One swallow doesn't make a summer, do I? How good are you, Chris? You happy? Where are your expectations? No? Could be the best, I believe. Cole, superb last game. Piss for the one before. Could be the best six in the world. You want to be? Brett, higher standard, even more. Scott, been the best player for us consistently through the last six games. Go another step. Rob, quicker to the breakdowns. Get the ball away, get your body down. Lead the side bloody well as you've been doing. Go up another notch. Gents, take them on. Hey, they'll be expecting you to take them on. Keep them honest. You two wingers. Alfie, Dan. Be bloody brilliant, eh? Get up there. Average performances. Sometimes very good, Alfie. Bloody good rugby, though. But all the qualities in the world. Let it happen. Enjoy yourself. Show your skills. Take them on, Dab. Get on both sides of the field. Be top international wingers. Top three. Howie? Standard slip last week. Not quite there. Can't afford that. Scott, you're back. 
and we want you to play, buddy. Mark, you're under pressure. Top game again. Collectively, guys, you have shown a lot of character. You have to think they've got to be bigger than that. <laughs> It wasn't pretty, but the French, with their feathers ruffled, would never allow it to be. Graham knew full well that this time, his team were better. It's a bloody simple game. We've got to run around like what the headless jokes, not knowing what to do. And it's all there. Now, we should bloody take 30 points off these buggers, is that? Shouldn't we? If we get out here together? All right, we've had a bloody dull 40. But now, we get bloody cracking and doing the job that we practice to do. Wasting time then and I've been here. The job was done. And even as one Scot was leaving the field with a slight muscle injury, another was creating havoc with some help from his friends. The cockerel's crown was dented once again. Eight out of eight for the Welsh, and a new victory dance unearthed. <laughs> on the eve of the World Cup, the squad are on top. They've already scaled Snowden. It's Everest next. If emotion counted, they'd already be there. And what if they don't make the peak? Graham will be happy if they play to their potential. But what is their potential? togetherness as 22 guys. It's about going to the wall for each other. It's about digging deep when you're stuck. And it's about getting off the ground after tackle and making the next one. It's about encouraging your mate. It's about what this team's about now, which is huge spirit and pride and guts. Thank you. 